Arbitration, exactly what is it? What is arbitration? Imagine you and your friend have a big disagreement about something, like who gets to use a video game. Instead of arguing and fighting about it, you both agree to let a trusted adult, like a teacher or coach, decide for you. That's kind of what arbitration is. Key points of arbitration Agreeing to arbitrate, you and your friend both agree that you won't argue anymore and will let the trusted adult, the arbitrator, decide. Choosing the arbitrator, you pick someone you both trust to be fair and know a lot about the problem you're having. This person is the arbitrator. The process, you both tell your side of the story to the arbitrator. This can be in person, over video, or in writing. It's a lot more relaxed than going to a courtroom. The hearing, it's like a mini trial, but way less formal. You explain your side, and your friend explains theirs. The decision, the arbitrator listens to both sides and then makes a decision called an award. This decision is final, like the end of a game when the referee blows the whistle. Following the decision, both you and your friend agree to follow whatever the arbitrator decides. It's like a rule you both have to follow. Privacy, unlike court cases that are public, arbitration is private. So, what happens in arbitration stays between you, your friend, and the arbitrator. Why choose arbitration? Faster, it usually takes less time than going to court. Cheaper, it can cost less than hiring lawyers and going to court. Expert help, the arbitrator often knows a lot about the issue you're arguing about. Flexible, you can set your own rules and schedule. Private, it's not open for everyone to see, unlike court cases. Downsides. Final decision, you can't usually change the arbitrator's decision, even if you don't like it. Cost, sometimes it can still be expensive. Binding, you have to stick to what the arbitrator says, no arguing afterward. So, arbitration is like having a trusted referee who listens to both sides of a disagreement and makes a fair decision that everyone agrees to follow. Yes, it is possible to amend an arbitration agreement by providing a notice of change in terms of the agreement, including incorporating an opt-out clause. However, this process involves several steps and considerations to ensure the amendment is binding on all parties. Here's a general outline of how this can be done. Steps to amend an arbitration agreement with a notice of change in terms. Review the original agreement. Check the original arbitration agreement for any clauses that specify how amendments can be made. Some agreements include specific procedures for modifications. Draft the amendment notice. Clearly state the changes you intend to make to the arbitration agreement. Include an opt-out clause if you want to provide parties with the option to not be bound by the arbitration agreement. Specify the effective date of the changes and how the opt-out process will work. Egg, written notice within a certain period. Communicate the notice. Send the notice of change to all parties involved in the original agreement. Ensure the notice is clear, precise, and provides all necessary information about the changes and the opt-out process. Provide adequate time for response. Give the parties a reasonable amount of time to review the changes and decide whether to accept them or opt out. Specify the deadline for opting out if they choose to do so. Obtain consent. For the amendment to be binding, ensure that all parties either explicitly agree to the changes or do not opt out within the given period. Document any consent or lack of opt out formally. Implement the changes. After the notice period expires, if no party opts out, the changes will be effective as specified in the notice. If any party opts out, their decision must be respected according to the terms of the opt out clause. Key considerations Mutual agreement. Amendments to arbitration agreements typically require the consent of all parties involved. This consent can be implied if parties do not opt out after receiving proper notice. Legal compliance. Ensure that the amendment process complies with any applicable laws and regulations governing arbitration agreements in your jurisdiction. Clear communication. The notice should be clear and unambiguous, detailing the specific changes and how they will affect the parties. Documentation. Keep thorough records of the notice sent responses received, and any agreements or opt-outs from the parties. Many companies will have attorneys volunteered to take the case to try to invalidate your arbitration. There are a few things you need to know. As long as your arbitration agreement is between consenting and competent adults, has an opt-out clause, is doable and workable, and the parties have received a copy, it has a commerce clause meaning that involves money and that the other party has a duty to respond i.e., there was a prior agreement, 
you have nothing to worry about. Companies often send out notices of changes to their terms of service or agreements, which can include updates to arbitration agreements. This is a common practice, especially among businesses such as financial institutions, telecommunications providers, and online service companies. These notices inform customers of changes and often include provisions that bind the customers to the new terms unless they take specific actions, such as opting out. How Companies Typically Send Notices of Change Notification companies send out notices of change via email, mail, or through their websites. They provide clear information about the changes and how they will affect the existing agreement. Effective Date Notices include an effective date for the new terms, giving customers a specific time frame to review the changes. Opt-out clauses often, these notices include opt-out clauses, allowing customers to reject the new arbitration agreement by following specified procedures within a set time period. Acceptance by continued use if customers do not opt out and continue to use the company's services after the effective date, they are deemed to have accepted the new terms. Example in practice. Let's say a company updates its terms of service to include a new arbitration clause. They might send out a notice like this notice of change to terms of service date Dear Valued Customer, we are writing to inform you of important updates to our terms of service, effective insert effective date. These updates include a new arbitration clause, which will govern the resolution of any disputes between you and company name. Key changes arbitration clause, any disputes arising under the updated terms of service will be resolved through binding arbitration rather than in court. You have the right to opt out of this arbitration clause by providing written notice to insert contact information within 30 days of receiving this notice. Effective date, the updated terms of service, including the arbitration clause, will take effect on insert effective date. If you do not opt out within the specified period and continue to use our services after the effective date, you will be deemed to have accepted the updated terms of service. For more details on the changes and to review the full updated terms of service, please visit Insert Link. If you have any questions or wish to opt out of the arbitration clause, please contact us at Insert Contact Information. Thank you for your continued trust in Company Name. Sincerely. Your name, your title, your contact information, applying this practice. You can adopt a similar approach to amend an existing arbitration agreement. Here's a streamlined process draft the notice, clearly outline the changes, including the new arbitration terms and any opt-out provisions. Send the notice, distribute the notice to all relevant parties through appropriate channels USPS mail. Provide a clear opt-out process, specify how parties can opt out of the new terms, including a deadline for opting out. Effective date, include an effective date for the new terms, ensuring parties have enough time to review and respond. By following these steps, you can effectively update an arbitration agreement and ensure that the revised terms are binding on all parties who do not opt out. His name, Bradley Christopher Stark. What is so significant about this young man? He realized something that only the lawyers knew, that he could flip the script, so to speak, on these corporations and government entities to counteract their corporate offers to contract contracts. The only thing he needed to do was to do what is known as a notice of change in terms of agreement, otherwise known as a conditional acceptance, basically saying, I accept your offer, but under the following conditions. He added in a three-day opt-out clause and a 10-day response clause. These were essential and pivotal as they did not violate any statute of limitations provisions in law. He also made sure to request documents that the opposing party had in their possession, as they act as the custodian of these records, and as such, are duty-bound to provide them to you as part of your agreement with them. The SITCOMM Arbitration Association at SAA. Limited.com has free contract templates covering a vast range of situations. But now that I have the contract and I send it out, how do I perfect the arbitration agreement and schedule arbitration?
The unique thing about arbitration is you get the structure of the agreement. When you change the terms of the original agreement, you get to choose the arbitrator and the other party has an opportunity to object within the statute of limitations as specified in the agreement. You first send out a notice of fault, notifying the other party that they had an opportunity to comply with the agreement and failed, and you're giving them an opportunity to cure the default. They are to provide proof that they responded within the time period permitted via the agreement providing the necessary information as specified in the agreement, and all they have to do is send over proof. That's it. Your next notice, which is the final notice, is a notice of default and intent to arbitrate. This notice simply tells them that they did not respond within the time permitted in the agreement and let your elected as required by the agreement to seek arbitration. The arbitrator will send out the notice to all parties, including you as to the scheduled hearing. And as discussed earlier, arbitration hearings do require a fee to be paid. However, these funds are all set by the arbitration judgment in favor of the party to whom the arbitrator decides is at fault. Since you followed all the steps and procedures, that cannot be you. Now you can take and do a 1099C on the arbitration award debt, forgiving only the monetary portion of the debt and receiving the credits respectively arbitration award. Remember, according to IRC 166 and in conjunction with IRS tax topic 453, you don't need to go before an arbitrator and you don't need to go to court so long as you can prove that a judgment from either would not result in you getting paid. By doing the 1099-C and filling out the appropriate tax documents respecting these newfound credits, you can increase your collateral asset pool, e. net worth, dollar for dollar. Got an award that you can't get confirmed? Simply 1099-C that debt and get the credits instead. It really is this simple. Arbitration is probably the simplest way of getting access to tax credits. All you need is a contract and the default and the resulting 1099C. Arbitration is not complicated, people are complicated, all you have to do is know the basics, so when I get educated. Keep in mind, tax credits are dollar for dollar, this means that they can be bought, sold, traded, used as collateral, used as assets, used for offsets, is that's payment because according to the June 5th Act of 1933 they are a coin or currency and or medium of exchange that is, an amount of money of the United States measured thereby. This is all about improving your net worth, you will have to do the research, but you have a foundation to begin with, as this tutorial video helps to achieve what you've been eating, and that is a starting point. You have your mark, now start running.